Hey, what's up guys? It's Tips, and welcome to my Classic WoW Herbalism Guide. In this video, I'll be showing you how to level your herbalism profession from 1 to 300 in a quick and efficient manner. Included in this guide will be the best areas to level herbalism for both factions, as well as a few backup options in case your nodes are contested. But let's jump right into it. To become an herbalist, you'll first need to visit an herbalism trainer and purchase the apprentice herbalist skill. The herbalism trainer can be found in any of the faction capitals, as well as most of the starting areas too. Once you've become an apprentice, you'll be ready to collect dank herbs. From levels 1 to 50, you'll be gathering Peace Bloom and Silver Leaf, which are located in each race's starting zones. There are plenty of nodes available in these zones, but if node spawns are rare, you can also find Peace Bloom and Silver Leaf in your race's second zone. When you've reached level 50, return to the Herbalist Trainer in any of your faction's capitals and purchase Journeyman Herbalist, which will raise your profession cap to 150. From 51 to 70, you'll be collecting Earthroot. Horde players will find these along the perimeter of the Barrens, north of Northwatch Keep. Alliance have it tougher here due to less Earthroot spawns and alley zones, but the area southwest of Kyranos past the quarry should be enough to reach 70. If not, you can visit the southern half of Darkshore to collect the rest. From 71 to 100, you'll be collecting Briarthorn. Horde players can find Briarthorn all over the Barrens, with most of the spawns located in the northern half of the Barrens above Camp Tarajo. There are also tons of Briarthorn spawns in the eastern half of Ashenvale, so if the Barrens is contested, just head north to collect those. Alliance players have it easy here, as they can farm Briarthorn all over Darkshore, which is a smaller and more compact zone than the Barrens. Additionally, there's a large concentration of Briarthorn southwest of Django Lode Mine in Westfall, so that's another option for the Alliance. From 101 to 115, you'll be collecting Bruiseweed. Horde have three options here. Option 1 is Silver Pine Forest at Amber Mill and Pyrewood Village. There's a high concentration of Bruiseweed in these two spots, so it's highly recommended. Option 2 is Stone Talon, where Bruiseweed is ubiquitous but spread out, and Option 3 is the Barrens south of Camp Tarajo towards the Razorfen Dungeons. Alliance players can find Bruiseweed in the eastern portion of Red Ridge, as well as the eastern Loch Modan, north of Iron Band's excavation. It should be noted that the Ogre compound to the far north of the Loch is filled with elites, so be careful when heading in that direction. If you're leveling in the wetlands, there's also a high volume of bruiseweed on the northwestern quadrant of the map, so don't worry about running out of bruiseweed while questing. From 116 to 125, you'll be collecting wild steel bloom. The perimeter of Arathi Highlands is by far the best place to farm this herb. If for whatever reason you're having difficulty finding nodes in Arathi, Alliance players can search along the perimeter of the wetlands mountains, and Horde players can check the southern barrens, where steel bloom spawns in high frequency. When you've reached 125, head to the Herbalism Trainer in your faction's capital and learn Expert Herbalist, which will raise your cap to 225. From 126 to 160, you'll be collecting King's Blood. Stranglethorn Vale has by far the highest amount of King's Blood of any zone in the game, but if you're on a PvP server or still haven't reached level 33, you can find King's Blood scattered across Hillsbrad, the Wetlands of your Alliance, and the Southern Barrens if you're Horde. From 161 to 185, you'll be collecting Fade Leaf and Goldthorn. Goldthorn becomes collectible at 170, so keep that in mind. The best place to farm these two herbs is the western half of Swamp of Sorrows. You can also find a large amount of Fade Leaf in the northern Alterac Mountains. Arathi is a third option, with compact pockets of Fade Leaf growing in these marked locations. From 186 to 205, you'll be farming Cadgar's Whisker. Like King's Blood, there are tons of KW spawns in STV, but you can also find a bunch in the eastern half of Arathi and the western half of Swamp of Sorrows. When you've reached 205, return to the Herbalism Trainer in your faction's capital and learn Artisan Herbalist, which will raise your profession cap to 300. From 205 to 230, you'll be collecting Firebloom. The best places to collect this herb are Searing Gorge and Blasted Lands, although Blasted Lands is a little bit more dangerous. You can also find Firebloom scattered across Tenaris, but you should be careful as Tenaris is a sprawling zone with a lot of ground to cover, which will slow you down. From 231 to 250, you'll be collecting Sungrass. The best spot to farm these is the Hinterlands, where Sungrass grows in great quantities. You can also find a ton of Sungrass in Southern Ashara, but be careful if you're on a PvP server, because you'll likely find a lot of competition there due to other important herbs spawning in the zone. 
Finally, the Blasted Lands is another good place to farm Sungrass because it's a relatively small zone with the trade-off being the dangerous nature of the mobs there. From 251 to 270, you'll be farming Grom's Blood. Fellwood is the best place to farm this herb due to its small size and high quantity of Grom's Blood nodes. Option 2 is the central area of the Blasted Lands. If Fellwood and BL are contested, you can visit Manorok Coven and Desolus as a few Grom's Blood node spawns there too. From 271 to 290, you'll be farming Dreamfoil. The best place to farm Dreamfoil is Ashara, but because Dreamfoil is a very important herb, you'll likely find a ton of competition here. Your next best bet is Ungoro, where Dreamfoil grows in large quantities, but world PvP is very common in this zone. The safest option, option 3, would be Fellwood, as it's smaller than the other zones where Dreamfoil grows and has lower mob levels than for example Eastern Plague Lands. Finally, from 291 to 300, you'll be collecting Plague Bloom. These are located all over the Eastern and Western Plague Lands, but can be found in Fellwood too. When you've collected enough Plague Bloom to hit 300, you've officially become a capped artisan herbalist. Enjoy the free gold, man. But that concludes my Classic WoW Herbalism Guide. If you're looking for more guides to aid you on your classic journey, sub it up and stick around because we got more coming. A quick shout out to all of my patrons who make videos like this possible. If you'd like to become a patron as well, I've left the link in the description for you. And for more classic WoW and vanilla content, you can check me out live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. Have a wonderful day, fellas. See you guys on Twitch, and as always, tips out, baby!